Let's talk about the Michelson-Morley experiment in a little bit more detail. So in the Michelson-Morley experiment, we have a light source, and light, like a laser, comes out of the light source and reflects off of a beam splitter. Part of that light reflects off of the beam splitter, goes to this mirror and to this point B, will reflect and then go back, go through the beam splitter, and eventually hit an observer or uh, a screen that's sitting there. The other half of the light will go through the beam splitter, reflect off of another mirror over here at C, reflect back to the beam splitter, and now the beam splitter will reflect it back to the observer. And so the light will recombine at the observer, light having gone from A to B, and light having gone from A to C. So if the time that it takes for the light to go from A to B, and the time it takes for the light to go from A to C is different, we will see an interference pattern. And so the idea is that Minkus and Worley did use this to test for the idea of the ether. How did they do this? Well, the idea is that our whole experiment is enclosed here on Earth inside a box, or rather on Earth, and Earth itself is moving through the ether. Let's say the Earth is moving through the ether in that direction. So out here is this mysterious ether. Because light is supposed to travel through the ether, like waves travel through water, then light traveling in one direction along the ether will travel at a different speed than light traveling along the perpendicular direction. So we can see this in a boat race. So imagine the following boat race. We have a river flowing to the right, and we have two boats that are racing. One boat goes across the river from A to B, and another boat, boat 2, goes down the river and then back up from A to C. And we're told two things. We're told that the boats travel the same speed, C, relative to water, and the boats travel the same distance, L. And what we'd like to know, which is important for understanding the Michelson-Morley experiment, is which boat wins. So let's actually start with boat 2 first. And so boat 2 first goes from point A to point C, and the relative speed it has going from A to C is given by C plus V. It gets an extra boost as it's going downstream. However, when it's going upstream, it has to fight the, against the river, and so it's going at a smaller level, relative speed of C minus V. So the total time it takes for boat 2 to travel from to C and back is given by the distance over the relative speeds for each leg. And we can simplify this by putting the terms over a common denominator. And we find that the total time it takes is given by this expression. So that's for boat two. Now let's consider boat one. So boat one first has to travel A to B. And as it goes from A to B, it must angle upstream because it's pushed downstream by the river. So we can represent this as vectors as the boat must angle upstream, so it must point upstream at some speed c, but the river pushes it downstream at some speed v, and the total net result is that the boat just moves perpendicular to the direction of the river flow. And that relative velocity can easily be found by Pythagorean theorem, so we find that the relative speed is the square root of c squared minus v squared. For the next leg of the journey, from b to a, again the boat must angle upstream because it's pushed downstream again. So we have a similar looking vector diagram where the boat is angled upstream, but it's pushed downstream by the river so that the relative velocity is completely perpendicular to the direction of the river. And as before, that relative velocity is the same at c squared minus v squared square root. So the relative speed in both cases is the same. Therefore, the total time that it takes to travel from b to and back is given by the distance over the relative speed for each leg. With a little simplification, we can make this look a little bit nicer and a little bit closer to what we had from the previous case. So to summarize, the total time that it takes for boats to go on leg one and leg two is given by these expressions here. So we're assuming that the speed of the river is much smaller than the speed of the boat, otherwise it wouldn't be able to move. And so in that case, the time that boat 1 takes to make the return trip is less than the time it takes for boat 2 to make the return trip. And so boat 1 wins. Now this is exactly what's going on in the ether. In the ether, if we go back to our original example, the light is traveling both 
upstream and downstream, and also across the stream and back. And so the time it takes for light to go there and back again depends on whether it's going up and downstream or across stream and back. Now in your homework you're asked to do this in the case where we don't know the angle that the laser beam makes with the ether. And so we can imagine that this is just like a boat race, like we just talked about, where there is a river flowing to the right downstream. And now we have a boat starting at, say, point A, and wants to go to some new point, say, some point D, which is some separation L from point A. And so it's going to go there and back again, except now those two points are at some angle theta relative to the direction that the river is flowing, or in the case of Mikkels and Morley, relative to the direction that the ether is flowing. So as a hint, you should set up a triangle, as we did in the case above for boat one, and keep in mind that it will not be a right triangle. So you will need to use the law of cosines. I hope that helps, and good luck in the homework.